everybody. Welcome to the Denver Zoo Zoo to You virtual safari. My name is Alyssa and I'm one of the keepers in our carnivore department. And I want to send, before we get started, I want to send a special thanks to all of our donors out there, uh, all of our members that come to the zoo and renew. We really appreciate you guys. Um, and I'd like to introduce you today to our animals that are in our little barn area. So that's going to be an African crested porcupine. And then we also have two mongoose that I'll introduce you to as well. Now right over here we do have Miss Needles and she is our 16 year old African crested porcupine and she is munching on an ice treat right now. I actually thought it was going to be a little bit warmer today so I did make some ice treats for her but she doesn't seem to mind um, that it's not that it's not super hot out today. She seems to be enjoying it just fine. It's actually got almond butter in it um, which is one of her very favorite things. So it's something that we call enrichment which is anything that can change up an animal's day or stimulate their mind and it can be in the form of of an ice treat with something yummy that she likes or it can be a new toy um, it can be all kinds of different things a new smell so we try to vary up what we give her on a daily basis so right now she's munching on that hi everyone who is joining us uh, this is Denver Zoo's Zoo to you virtual safari this is our uh, porcupine needles and if you are interested in donating today we have an amazing anonymous donor who is going to match up to five thousand dollars of donations so if everyone watching can donate what they can we can raise money for the zoo it's a critical time for us we are closed and have been for more than a week so we could really use donations and support right now so whatever you donate today we have an anonymous donor who's going to match that up to five thousand dollars so thank you to that anonymous donor and thank you to everyone who has donated so far we really appreciate the support including everyone who's bought or renewed a membership while we're closed. Those will go right into effect the day we open our gates. But if you wanna support us now through that way, that is a great way too. So let's get back to Needles, what she is chewing on, other enrichment in her species or in her exhibit. And with me to talk about that is Alyssa. So we already have a question, Alyssa. Ethan wants to know, how many mongoose do we have? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. So we've only got two now. We used to have 15. Uh, mongoose typically live uh, until they're 10 in their natural environment, uh, but here with us at the zoo, they can live up to 15. Um, so we still have two that were in that original group. And Ethan, if you stick with us in a couple minutes, we're gonna go behind the scenes of Little Barn and see our two mongooses, Doozer and Gobo. Yes. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Melanie wants to know, how old is Needles? Needles is 16 years old. And here with us, she could she could keep on going strong, maybe even into her early 20s. That would be a very old porcupine, though. Um, probably later 20s uh, is more, or excuse me, later teens is more realistic. But in their natural environment, where they're from, they typically live to 10 to 15 years. Let's talk about the other enrichment that you've placed in her habitat here. Yeah, so we try to do something new every day. You can see there's lots of sticks in here. One of Needle's favorite things to do is to chew on sticks. She does have teeth that constantly grow. Um, so we're always looking for different ways uh, to give her different stimulation to go and chew on things. She's also got a bone um, that's right there on the floor of the exhibit. Um, and that's something that she can go chew as well, uh, similar to something that you would also maybe give a dog. Uh, and then there's the little box over there, uh, the PVC box with some hay in it. And she actually got her grain in that today. So she had to go in there and she had to sort through all that hay and find her grain. Um, and it took her a little while. Thea wants to know how tall Needles is. Oh, that's a good question. Well, so uh, I'm getting her... on the floor so you can see. This is this is the ground height. Right yeah, now. so that's the ground height. I don't know if I can stand next to her. You can kind of see where she comes to on my legs. When she fully puffs up, some of her quills are over a foot, foot and a half long. So when she fully puffs up, she could maybe get to my knees. Um, but she stays pretty low to the ground. It's just those quills that are gonna come up. And you have some quills with you right now to show I everyone at do. home what they look like. So I've got a couple of different ones. I've got one of her thicker quills right here. Um, most of Needle's quills are gonna be located on the back half of her body. Uh, and so she's got those nice thick quills on the back half. And then towards the top, she has these really long quills. Um, she has those along her head and neck. And that's where they get that name African Crested Porcupine. Someone wants to know, Kim says, how much does Needles weigh? Yeah, so she weighs oh, right around 30 pounds. 30, that's a little heavier than I would have yeah. thought. <laughs> yeah, she's, uh, she's pretty dense, so. <laughs> and Ella wants to know, how does she, Needles, protect herself? Yeah, so a lot of people believe that porcupines can shoot their quills, but that's actually a myth. 
they're not able to do that. So if a predator were to come up, what Needles is gonna do is she's gonna puff up those quills nice and big, and she's actually gonna back into them. These quills are very sharp, and so that's gonna scare away a lot of predators. Um, and that's how she's gonna protect herself. Someone, Daly wants to know how sharp are the quills. So this is one of the quills. Yeah, so I, I wouldn't even put my finger really hard on it, but I would say it's yeah. similar to if you guys were to have a sharp end Ooh. of a knife. Yeah. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to have porcupine back in at full speed into you. That, that would hurt a lot. <laughs> Nathan would like to know how many quills needles has. Do we know that? Oh man, that's a great question. I am not sure um, how many mm -hmm. quills she has, especially with all the ones on her head that go down into her back. Um, I would guess in the thousands. Wow. Um, Angela wants to know what is the difference in the needles? We just kind of talked about the thickness and the length, but why do they have two different kinds? Yeah. So the ones in her head are going to help to give her the appearance that she's going to look a lot bigger. As you go towards the back, she's going to have these thicker quills and she actually at the very base of her tail has hollow quills where when she, she can vibrate them when she senses a predator and she actually can make a rattling noise. And so that's gonna help scare off those predators too. So some of the quills, depending on where they're located at her on her body, can help serve different purposes. And how fast can needles back into someone? That's a, gotta be a really um, important part of, you know, scaring off a predator is backing in. Yeah, at miles per hour, you know, I'm, I actually don't have a number for you. Um, she, can, she can travel pretty quickly though. Um, I mean, quick enough for a predator to, to not be able to get away in time. So Levi also wants to know how much and what they eat. So Needles gets a variety of different things every day. Uh, she is an herbivore, which means she's gonna be eating all kinds of plant materials. Um, and we also give her a grain diet too. So she gets grain and she gets lots of vegetables. So we give her lots of green, lots of romaine lettuce, uh, red and green leaf lettuce. Uh, and then she also gets carrots. She loves celery. She gets squash, zucchini, all kinds of different things. And then every once in a while, in very, very small quantities, we get, we'll give her like little banana chips oh. um, or something fun like that. But again, that's in real small quantities. So Gavin, age seven, wants to know if they regrow their quills after they release them. But we talked, they, she doesn't release them, does she? So she'll back in and they'll get transferred over. So once okay. they stick into a predator, sometimes they will come out. Um, so yes, she will regrow those quills and she also sheds them. And that's how I got these. What are their main predators? Their main predators are gonna be lions, leopards, maybe large birds of prey, uh, and also people. Believe it or not, people actually believe that these quills serve as good luck charms. Um, so that's something where uh, if we can spread the word and educate people about how awesome these guys are, um, we can help to keep them a protected species. And if you're a regular visitor to Denver Zoo, you know that needles and our mongooses and Dick Dick all live on the other side of Benson Predator Ridge opposite that primary yard. So we have the four lion brothers there today, uh, but this makes sense because they're an African animal. Yep. So this is where this is where they should be. Someone, Ruby Four, wants to know where she sleeps. <laughs> so she actually sleeps, there's an example of it right up here in a big pile of hay. So each day we give her a fresh new bed um, and she is super cute because she goes, if we pile it up in a big pile, she'll go to the very top of that pile and she'll plop down on her belly. <laughs> and that's one of her favorite things to do is take naps all day long in her beds of hay. Oh man. And how do we get her inside if it snows or does she like being outside in the snow? Oh, she's not a big fan of the snow. Uh, so she does come in every night, um, especially during these winter months. Uh, and she'll actually respond to her name. So we can call her and she'll come in. Uh, she also likes being inside too. It's not usually um, a problem getting her in there. She knows that that's where our kitchen is and that's where her food comes from. Yeah, we don't have too many problems getting animals inside yeah. when, <laughs> when they want to come. What is your favorite part about taking care of the animals on this side of, pre of Predator Ridge? Oh geez, I probably how charismatic they are. So all of the animals in this little barn area, they're older. Um, a lot of them are kind of in those geriatric years, um, but their personalities are still so big. So it's so fun to see them. Um, and all of, I'll tell you a little bit about our mongoose as soon as we get inside. Uh, but their personality quirks too are just great to see on a daily basis. And Mel Melanie wants to know, is needles soft? <laughs> um, she does have softer bristles. 
that are located kind of on the sides of her head um, towards the front half of her body, but most of her is not soft. Most of her is gonna be these quills and they kind of feel like how your fingernail would feel on the outside. And then they're sharp, obviously, at the very end. We have a great question. How deep do the quills go into a predator? How deep? Ooh, I'm gonna guess if they go back, they'd probably go up to an inch. Up to an inch. That would not be fun to pull out. Uh, no. Felix wants to know if they swim. If they swim, they do not. So um, Needles loves having her little buckets of water that she's got and she'll drink out of those, but she is not a swimmer. Her legs definitely aren't built for that. They're real short and stubby, um, and she's got quite a bit of body mass, so I don't know that she'd be able to support herself in water. Yeah, if you weren't with us earlier, Needles is 33 pounds. Yes. And how long is she? Do we have a... Um, head to tail, I'm gonna guess around three feet. Around three feet, she's, she's a big girl. Yeah, we like she it. is. <laughs> she, and she's very into what's kind of going on around here with the bone and the lettuce you've put out. She's got a really enriching habitat today. Yeah, so lots of different things for her to go and explore and she knows it's snack time right now, so she's checking to make sure she didn't leave anything behind. <laughs> and, uh, Mariah wants to know, does she let keepers get close to her? Oh, she does, yes. So we do a lot of training with needles. Um, so we'll go in there and we'll train her to do things like get on a scale. Um, so she'll come up to us. However, if we do have to be careful around her because we don't want to startle her. She's also a lot older. Um, so we try to make sure she knows that we're approaching. Um, otherwise, she will turn around and she'll kind of puff up a little bit, but she knows that we're here to take care of her. Nicole says Needles is her son's absolute favorite oh, animal yay! at the zoo. I'm so happy to hear that. She <laughs> is one of my favorites too. Um, Lala, age nine, wants to know, does Needles and her species, do they like to dig? Yes, porcupines love to dig. So what they'll do too, um, in their natural environment, and she'll do it too, is they'll dig out burrows, and that's what they'll use to keep warm and sleep in um, with their other porcupine friends. And all this stuff that you see, this brown around in the sand, that was actually all in that black bin this morning. <laughs> so she <laughs> managed to take all of that and dig it all out of the black bin. So I, I raked this yard nice and pretty for you guys this morning, but now it's, now it's not. <laughs> uh, Amy says, does she mind living by herself? She doesn't, no. Needles spends a lot of her time, like I mentioned earlier, she is um, a pretty old porcupine. So she spends a lot of her time napping in the sun. That's her favorite <laughs> thing to do. Um, and when she's not napping, she's usually chewing on sticks um, or we're giving her some enrichment. So we keep her pretty busy um, whenever she's not keeping herself busy with sleeping. <laughs> and she does share this exhibit with the mongooses. She too. does, yes. She's also got, that's a good point, the mongoose will come out here um, and they actually have a special little door in our holding area. So behind the scenes, they can share the same enclosure too. What is her lifespan, Kelly wants to know? So they'll typically live in the wild to around 15, um, but here with us, they could live up into their late teens. Oh, here's a good question. As a baby, do they have quills? Yeah, a lot of people wonder that. So when they are first born, they just have those soft bristles that you can see towards the front of her head. Um, it's it's kind of almost like a fur, um, or it feels more like hair. And then as they grow, they're going to stiffen into those quills. And so let's see, uh, has Needles had any babies? Not to my mm. knowledge. And do we know how long the gestation is for just a female uh, oh, crested? it's three months. Three months, that's pretty short. That is short. Well, is everyone who's joining us ready to go inside and see our mongooses? Yeah, I I'm think excited I'm, to think show you guys to see these. That. Oh, one last question about needles. How big are they when they're born? Yeah, so when they're born, um, they're maybe the size of, size of my hand, a little bit smaller. Um, they're really tiny when they're born. <laughs> oh, man. So they're, so... they're really cute. All right, we're going to head inside. We're going to answer a couple more questions while we walk with Alyssa. Oh, okay. um, is she smelly? <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> um, yeah, she's definitely smelly. We have to go in there, and her enclosure takes the most time to clean out of any of these guys that you're about to see. Um, so there's some animals where... We'll keep their scents and we won't hose every day, but that's not the case with needles. We have to hose every day with her. <laughs> She's kind of smelly. Someone wants to know why we named her needles, but I think that's kind of obvious. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> these, poor, these little quills here, they're pretty sharp, um, kind of like a needle would be. So 
guessing that's how she got her name. While we're walking, I'm once again gonna remind everyone that donations are so critical to Denver Zoo right now. We need your support now more than ever. So you can donate by clicking the button that's part of this post. You can go to our website and donate to our emergency funds. To date, we've raised more than $55,000. So thank you everyone. Your support means more than we can say right now. Hello everyone, this is our third and hopefully this is the lucky charm take for our Denver Zoo Zoo to You virtual safari. We have now, <laughs> instead of trying to make it work inside, we've just brought the animals outside. It's a beautiful day. I'm here with Alyssa. We are so sorry and so thankful for everyone who has stayed with us and been patient through these technical difficulties. Um, so we are outside with uh who who do we have here Alyssa? so we have gobo and doozer so right now doozer is in the ball pit um and he is foraging around trying to find some worms um <laughs> and some little cheerios that i put in there uh, and then we've got gobo right here and he is chowing down on some greens um so when we have them together typically i was going to do this separate just because whenever we feed needles um if we if we allow the mongoose out Sometimes they'll come and they'll eat your food, but that's okay because it's just lettuce. So he's just chowing down on some lettuce right now. I'm um, just kind of hanging out. Oh, and this is actually, so the way we tell them apart uh, is by looking at a couple of different things. Gobo doesn't have um, any white on his nails. So that's a good way for us to tell them apart. Another way for us to tell them apart is by looking at their back hips. So you can actually see that Doozer, he's the one on the left right there. Okay. Um, he has a little shaved spot oh, on his yeah. back right hip, and that's what helps us tell them apart. Um, and then obviously telling them apart by personality too is huge. Um, Gobo tends to be a little bit more bold. He definitely tends to be the one that that is um, kind of all about us whenever we're in the enclosure for whatever reason. And then Doozer's a little bit more shy. He kind of just does his own thing. Um, which is perfectly fine. <laughs> and now if you're just joining us, this is Needles. We were talking about her earlier. She's our 15 year old, what is the species name? Um, <laughs> she, yes, she's our 16 year old 16 African year old. crested porcupine. 16 year old African crested porcupine. So she is out here with our two mongooses, Gobo and Doozer, and they are foraging right now in this ball pit. Uh, Kaylin wants to know what their favorite treat is. Yeah, so their favorite treat uh, is gonna be their inverts. Um, which could be a worm, it could be a cricket, um, but super worms are probably their favorite. And which of the three animals out here is the oldest? Uh, that would be Needles. So she's 16, but Gobo and Doozer aren't far behind her. Um, both of them are 14. Um, gonna be 15 on April 28th. 15 on April 28th, so don't forget to wish them a happy birthday. Now, someone wants to know, do they fight like brother and sister? They do, yes. <laughs> So especially um, over food sometimes. Um, so we have to make sure we give everybody a fair amount um, and divide it equally. Cause if we don't, they'll start fighting and they make little noises at each other. Um, kind of like little hisses, little hisses and um, some chuffing at each other. Uh, if they were getting territory or something. Now where can you find Gobo and Doozer, uh, their species in the wild? Yeah, so this is gonna be an African species. All right. What are some of their adaptations that help them against predators and help them catch their food? Yeah, so they'll actually do something. It's really neat. It's called bunching. Um, and what they'll do is they'll get together in a group. They're very social animals. So they can live in groups of five to 20 individuals. Um, and they'll get together and they'll actually move towards a predator, which can totally freak a predator out. Um, <laughs> and that's one of the ways that, um, that they can use is just having those numbers behind them to make them look bigger. Um, they also have, they're very agile um, with their paws. Their front paws, um, they've got claws on or nails on all four, um, but especially those front arms or I don't know what we want to call them, just legs. The front <laughs> legs um, they can use to dig. So they're going to be digging out um, termite mounds. A lot of times they'll find old termite mounds and that's what they'll inhabit to live in. Um, and they'll dig out up to 10 entries and exit points. Uh, we've actually got kind of a fake termite mound on our exhibit um, located right over there, uh, that kind of big mountain looking structure. And they'll oftentimes go in there. Gavin wants to know if these guys were born at the zoo. I believe they were, yes, because we started with 15 of them. And what kind of mongoose are they? Um, they're banded mongoose. Banded mongoose. So and what makes that different? So if you look on their different? backs, you can see those little, what look like bands. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're just having a ball. Now, do they interact with needles? Nathan wants to know. Yeah, that's a good question. So, um, they don't really, like, we'll pass each other and they'll check out what each other is doing, uh, but they kind of ignore each other other than that. Um, Needle spends a lot of her day napping, um, and then these guys just kind of do their own thing. So, they they have a lot of energy, whereas <laughs> Needles just kind of likes to kind of eat and hang out. Um, but our mongoose are super energetic and smart, and Needles is smart too. But Now, if you're with us on our first live stream, uh, this is the last of the ice treat that oh, we got for yeah. Needles. <laughs> it's just a little bit of ice there left, but I saw one of the mongoose over here oh. inspecting it, seeing if they wanted it. <laughs> so that's kind of what's happening here. So yes, we have mongoose and porcupine right in front of us here. This is the other side of Predator Ridge. Our lions are right over there. Our four lion brothers are out in the primary yard today, but also an African species, these guys. So that's why we're featuring them today. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. As a reminder, Denver Zoo is closed right now, so we can use all the support that you're able to give right now. You can click the donate button. You can donate to our emergency fund. We have raised $55,000 since we closed you, everyone. So thank you so much. And today we have an anonymous donor who's going to match up to $5,000 of donations. So if we can get that number, we can double that and get $10,000 raised for Denver Zoo today. So we have another question, Alyssa. Travis yeah. wants to know, how long their tongue is and if they have teeth. How long their tongue is? <laughs> um, I'm not really sure how long it would be. If you look at where their eyes are, um, I mean, that's kind of where their mouth ends. <laughs> uh, so if that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea, um, one of them is posing up there pretty nice yeah, for you to see. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> um, they do have teeth, yes. Now these two, uh, because they're much older, they've only got about half their teeth left. Um, so we do chop up their diet into really fine pieces for them, um, just to make it make it easy for them. But yes, they do have lots of teeth. So who's this one closest to the glass right um, now? So this right here is Gobo. That's Gobo. And Gobo's kind of walked off. There's Doozer up there then. He's investigating the enrichment we put out for needles. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing if she left anything in that hay. Yeah, they're, I see they're kind of digging, making sure there's not one mealworm or Cheerio left <laughs> behind. <laughs> so let us know if you have any questions about these guys or needles. She's still out here with us. They do share this habitat. Um, what is their biggest predator? Their biggest predator. So that's going to be... They're gonna have things like lions. Um, they're gonna have leopards go after them. Birds of prey can go after them. Lots of different things with their size. Mariah says Gubu, Gobo and Doozer's birthday is close to her son's birthday. Her son William will turn five on April 29th. Oh, wow. These so, guys are <laughs> 10 years older. <laughs> Happy early birthday to William then. Let's see, we have more questions. Why are they playing in a ball pit? <laughs> Jack, <laughs> age 10, wants to know. Yeah, good question. So uh, we do a lot of what we call enrichment here at the zoo for our animals. And that's basically anything that can stimulate their mind. Um, and with the goal of our enrichment, we try to do things that would bring out natural behavior. So things like digging, um, things like burrowing, all kinds of stuff like that. Um, so we'll give them, it can be in the form of a new toy, uh, hence the ball pit here. Um, <laughs> but in this ball pit, we've hidden some of their diet, so they actually have to work for it. Um, they actually, it's been proven that animals actually prefer um, to work for their food, so to have to try a little bit instead of it just being presented to them, because that would get kind of boring if it just was presented on a plate every time. Um, so we switch it up. Tim's curious why they share an exhibit. Yeah, so... They share an exhibit because we can utilize the space for both of them and they, they don't mind living with each other. And it's really neat to put a couple species together because um, it mimics what would be more like their natural environment. So anytime we can do that, it's, um, it's cool for us to be able to do. Adley is wondering how big will mongoose get? If they're 15, this is their full size, isn't it? It is, <laughs> yep. So they both weigh um, about four pounds each. Four that's, that's fully grown for them. So four pounds uh, is full grown, Adley. Uh, Daly wants to know how long they stay with their mom. I believe it's a, 
about a year or so, but they do live in groups of five to 20 individuals. Um, so whether that's staying with their family or branching off and going with other mongoose, they are a very social species. Um, so they're not gonna be going off on their own. Uh, with that being said though, as the individual matures, um, they become mature right around 10 months. Um, so once they mature, the males will probably venture off on their own um, to go find another group. Connor wants to know if a mongoose is fast. Can they run fast? Um, yeah, they can. I mean, they're not going to be, they're definitely not built with super long legs. Um, <laughs> yeah. So nothing compared to, um, compared to say a cheetah or anything like that. Um, but they can move at a pretty good clip when they get going. Do they ever get brushed? We do not brush them here. They do a pretty good job of grooming themselves and also grooming each other. Uh, they're pretty closely bonded. Um, so they get in their little hammock at night uh, and they both snuggle with one another um, and they'll kind of groom each other. So we don't really need to do any of that for them. And someone wants, uh, has a question for you. When you have to handle needles, how do you avoid getting poked? <laughs> yeah, so needles, we do a lot of training with her. So we never have to go in there and pick her up or anything like that. So I never really have to handle her, but when I do go in there with her, I try to make sure she knows where I am at all times. Um, so she relies a lot on her hearing, especially being older. She really doesn't have good sight, eyesight, so she relies on her hearing and her smell. Um, so I try to be a little bit louder when I'm in there, kind of shuffle my feet a little bit so she knows where my steps are. Um, and then sometimes if we happen to catch her off guard, she will puff up a little bit, but she knows we're safe um, and that we're here to take care of her. So a lot of times we don't have any issues. Here goes a mongoose back into the ball pit. <laughs> what did we put in the ball pit uh, for them to forage? So in the ball pit, they had Cheerios. Uh, they also had some, in, some super worms. And then they had some of their diet as well, which was a mixture of different fruits and vegetables. Um, so they had celery, uh, raspberries, peaches. What else did I put in it? Um, lots of different things. <laughs> Oh man, they are so cute. Uh, someone wants to know what their favorite toy is, but we don't call them toys, we call them enrichment. So what do you think their favorite enrichment item is? Yeah, their favorite enrichment device would probably be, I don't know if you guys, if you guys saw it earlier or not, um, but the little puzzle feeder balls. So when we put those worms in there um, and they get to move around those balls uh, and try to get the worms to come out of the little holes they really like that because it's a nice challenge for them and worms are their favorite food so are our mongooses friendly yes they're super friendly so we can go in there with them um, sometimes we'll socialize with them because they are such a social species um, and we can go into their enclosure um, and they'll kind of crawl on us and expect and kind of inspect um, our clothing and smell us and it's good for them it's enrichment they get new smells out of it um, and like I said that socialization it also allows us to uh, provide them great welfare because we can get a good look um, nice and close at them just like you guys are getting right now with Gobo. Yeah uh, yeah so Kennedy wants to know do you pet them? <laughs> um, <laughs> we we can but they don't like it. They don't so like it. So typically what we what we call it is um, touching them because if you're at home, you're going to pet your dog or cat and they're probably going to enjoy it. But these guys here, um, the only reason we train them to allow us to touch them is going to be for those husbandry behaviors. So that just means for us to take better care of them. Um, so if we need to check the fur to make sure he has no scrapes or scratches underneath, um, but they don't really seek us out uh, for attention or anything. That's what they have each other for. Levi wants to know if they are herbivores, the mongooses. So believe it or not, they're not. They are opportunistic feeders. Um, so they're omnivores. They'll eat meat or fruits or vegetables. So here at the zoo, we give them um, a, ground, a ground beef diet. They also get fruits and veggies, and then they get small rodents, what are called pinkies. Um, that's their, their favorite. They get two of those each day, um, and they love that. How are needles five senses? That's a good question, Tommy. Oh, let's see here. Okay test my knowledge here. Well, taste, one of them, great. Um, needles absolutely loves all different things. Um, that almond butter, she definitely can taste well because um, that's one of her favorite treats. Um, her seeing, I mentioned before, she does not have very good eyesight. So she's gonna rely a lot more on her sense of smell. 
um, and also her hearing. So those are gonna be what she's gonna rely more on. So not so good on the eyesight and then touch, I guess is the last one. Um, she, she can be a little clumsy, um, but typically she's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Hey there, Jack. Uh, we talked about this earlier. The mongoose weigh about four pounds each, and that is as big as they'll get. They're grown up and they weigh four pounds. So that is how heavy they are. What does the fur of a mongoose feel like? Um, I would say it's a little bit more, a little bit more coarse um, than maybe a dog or a cat. Um, <sighs> trying to describe everyone that. always wants to know what how like how soft an animal yeah, is and it's not as it's not super soft um or anything it's a little bit more coarse like i said we'll take a couple more questions and i'm here to remind you all that donations are so important to denver zoo right now and we have an anonymous donor who's going to match all donations today up to five thousand dollars so you can have such a huge impact on denver zoo today if you donate We'll be posting these lives later. You can donate all day or you can donate through our emergency fund, but all those donations, so important right now as we watch our mongoose and porcupine in the little barn habitat of Predator Ridge. Now, Gina wants to know if you sit in the habitat, will they climb on you? Yes, our <laughs> mongoose will, needles will not. Um, she she kind of likes to keep her distance. Um, she might come up to us to see if we have treats for her, uh, but our mongoose will. They're super curious animals, they're super social. So they'll come over to us and see what we're doing. If we have new smells on us, they're gonna be the first ones to check that out. Um, uh, Charlie wants to know why they look like they have stripes, and that is because they are the banded mongoose. Yep, banded mongoose, and it helps out too with camouflage. Um, so it helps them kind of blend into their environment. They're going to be hanging out um, and seeking shelter and kind of old termite mounds and that kind of thing. Um, so that's going to be kind of that brownish, black, sand, dirt texture. Um, so those bands also might help them blend in. So we know Needles is not a fan of the snow. What about Gobo and Doozer? No, Gobo and Doozer are even less of a fan um, than Needles is. So <laughs> anytime they see anything, they really don't like water and they don't like snow. <laughs> um, so if it's, if it's a snowy day or anything, uh, we don't even bother giving them the choice to go outdoors because they prefer to be inside um, and they'll hang out in their hammocks and um, get enrichment indoors but and yeah I think those are all the questions we have thank you everyone who's been sticking with us throughout the live stream today our earlier one with our technical difficulties we appreciate this oh we have another question um are the mongooses or needles colorblind oh that's a really good question <laughs> I'm actually not sure. I know Needles has a hard time um, with vision. She's a lot older. Um, so I, I don't think she can see in color. I don't know about our mongoose. And does Needles ever get mad if the mongooses get too close? Yes. So <laughs> if the mongoose comes over and tries to take her food, um, she'll chop at him. Or she'll do a little... Um, kind of a little she'll kind of push her body forward at them and they leave her alone right away so, so they can cohabitate but they're not um best friends exactly yep <laughs> <laughs> how much water do they need to drink um not i mean if i had to put it it's not a lot um they're not going to be taking in a whole bunch of water it's going to be relative to their size too um, but I'll see needles throughout the day. I'll see her take drinks maybe three or four times. Huh. Um, the mongoose, I don't think I've ever seen the mongoose go up and take a drink of their water. <laughs> um, so, and sure. we have a lot of people curious, do mongoose, mongooses really hold their own with snakes? Um, yeah, so they can get together in big groups. I mentioned this a little bit earlier and do something called bunching. Um, where they'll get a ton of mongoose together and they'll go at their predator. And that'll scare some predators away because if you see, you know, five to ten mongoose in a bunch, you're not going to want to mess with them. Um, so they can definitely hold their own, but that definitely is one of their predators. All right, everyone. So those are all the questions we have time to answer. Um, a lot of these were answered in our first and this live stream. So we'll put those together and put those up for you later. Uh, but thank you everyone who's been joining us for our Denver Zoo, Zoo to You virtual safaris. We really appreciate you all tuning in, lending your support, whether it's just a nice comment or financial support. Uh, we really couldn't be doing this without you. So thank you to everyone. And we will be back tomorrow.